very good evening. The Department of Education is very pleased with the 2018 NCEA results for students for level 1, 2 and 3. Director of Education Bertha Tongahai says they extend their sincere congratulations and appreciation to all the students for a job well done. In particular, of 14 students eligible for university entrance, Niue High School boasted a record increase with 13 out of 14 students gaining university entrance last year. The Director of Education says they would like to take this opportunity to thank the students, parents and caregivers as well as the teachers for all the support provided to the students. She adds the department looks forward to the continuing awesome performance at the end of this year. Police have confirmed that a vehicle belonging to the Justice Department was stolen over the weekend. The case was brought to the police attention by the Justice Department on Tuesday. Inspector Brent Ioane says the perpetrator has been identified. However, he has already left the country on the Monday flight. Ioane added that the prosecution will still proceed and should the person return to Niue, he will be taken to court. The Justice Department could only confirm that their vehicle was stolen over the weekend and could not give any further comments on the matter. It's understood that the same person is responsible for damaging the gravestone in Avasele after hitting it with a stolen vehicle. The village of Avasele have uh, since restored the gravestone. Over 60 women in Niue have undergone gynecological assessments and treatments by the visiting team from New Zealand. The group of obstetrician and gynecologists are from counties Manukau DHB in South Auckland, affiliated with Middlemore Hospital. The annual visit by the team of obstetrician and gynecologists is part of an exchange program. In terms of gynecological issues, the main issue that we've seen here on the island is heavy menstrual bleeding and, um, or heavy periods and irregular periods. And most of this is related to obesity and women being overweight, and that causes irregular and heavy periods. So we've seen a, a, a number of patients with this condition uh, to do uh, a workup and sampling, and especially sampling of the endometrium and the li or the lining of the womb, because women with heavy periods who is obese have they are unfortunately at increased risk of developing. Uh, endometrial cancer in the future. So that's what we've mainly mainly seen. Uh, we've assessed these women and uh, done uh, biopsies and uh, discussed treatment options with them. The group has been conducting gynecological assessments and treatments since last Saturday. Oh, it's been fantastic. I found uh, the people of Nui to be really welcoming and really open, which is fantastic. Um, I think the biggest issue is that women didn't know we were here. So we've been really busy, don't get me wrong, we've seen lots and lots of women, but we're still having women come up to us and say, oh, I didn't know that you guys were coming. So I think maybe next time we come for longer. Next time we'd like to spread the word earlier, especially for women in the community, that they are more than welcome to come, make an appointment for any sort of gynecological issue and if they have a need of routine pap smear. Even if it means that uh, we need to double book or slot them in where we have an availability, if they are happy to, to wait, and um, then we'll be more than happy to, to see them. Local medical staff have also been learning from the group and assisting them. We couldn't have been as efficient and as uh, smooth running without the local staff and the local hospital. And I especially want to um, thank Tokaza, who's been the nurse that's been assigned to our clinic. She's been absolutely fantastic and she's been a great asset. So we've um, done very little upskilling and training, unfortunately, because we don't have a lot of time. But hopefully for the future, I'll planning to come visit and do some upskilling and training with the staff um, here as well. I'd also like to thank Sister Pua, who's organized and been instrumental in um, helping with the visit. And also thank you to Fingo and Ali and also Dr. Eddie. The skill level is actually really high and it's been fantastic. I think as well on arrival we found there was a colposcope in the hospital, which is a special kind of equipment that we use for women who have had an abnormality on their smear, um, which we didn't know was here. So we've been able to use that, which is fantastic for the women of Niue as well. Women are being advised to maintain a healthy lifestyle. Niue is a, a small nation and um, there is a, 
a lot of obesity and overweight women, my advice would probably be to uh, concentrate on healthy eating and regular exercise. And please come and see the team here if you have any problems with heavy, uh, uh, irregular or painful periods. And also, the plan is to come back annually for a visit. And if there's any concerns, if women can approach the team so that they can refer them um, to us when we come next time. Niue has made impressive progress in relation to gender equality. This is according to a UNDP gender specialist who uh, met a diverse group of people in Niue as part of an assessment on gender equality. The gender specialist is Ko Miawi, who is from the Bangkok UNDP office. It's a requirement of donor agencies to have information about gender equalities in countries that received funding assistance from UNDP. So sometimes when we implement development projects, um, if we don't pay attention to the existing level of gender equality or sometimes gender inequality, it can impact negatively the achievement of the project objectives. So for example, if the project is aiming for, let's say, energy for all, all meaning all men and women, um, boys and girls, and if we don't pay attention to the relationship between men and women in communities, we could be running a risk of leaving somebody behind. So even though we're implementing a large project for energy for all, at the end of the project we may realize we only benefited a part of the population because we didn't do a proper gender analysis at the beginning. And, and that's the sort of reason why we want to make sure that um, we are not leaving anyone behind. And that is the principle of the sustainable development goals as well. The consultant worked with the project teams to ensure that stakeholder consultations are gender responsive to conduct a joint gender assessment and gender action plan for the projects and to integrate the gender analysis results into the project plans. We see all these very positive indicators for um, gender equality progress in new way. There are also underlying um, issues that are suggesting that these progress may not be so secure. So while we see many women participating in um, senior positions in the government, 25% um, in the parliament doesn't reflect the proportion of women holding senior positions in the government. So that is a bit strange. Um, when girls are doing so well in schools, uh, we don't see a, a sort of similar proportion of women being active in the parliament. Um, we also see that there are generation gaps where uh, older values and new values are not quite well reconciled. And there are also concerns I was hearing that um, while uh, reporting of domestic violence is very rare, um, and also witnessing domestic violence becomes rarer than before. There is a concern that um, domestic violence just gone into hiding and they're actually happening but just not visible as much as it used to be. So there are those issues that need to be addressed and if we don't address those issues, we could stand at the risk of losing the gains being made for gender equality in the last 20 years. 11 people have been granted permanent residency status. Certificates were presented to 11 recipients at an official ceremony held at the Parliament House on Tuesday morning following approval of the applications last year. The recipients needed to have met their requirements under New Year's Immigration Act 2011 and is the first group to be presented PR status following the new changes. One recipient included former New Zealand High Commissioner to New Year, Mark Blumsky, who says he is proud to be a New Year. Government officials that presented the certificates were Honorable Billy Talangi and Ma'am Maureen Melekitama. Shark research in the catch and release program is still ongoing, led by the New Air Oceanwide Project and the Ministry of Natural Resources, who were joined by shark and marine science experts. In a forum held last year, there were concerns by fishermen for the increased number of sharks, triggering the imperative research. Sharks taking fish from local fishermen was raised at a local meeting last year has led to New Air Oceans Wide, also known as NOW, and to Fear New Air, working in collaboration with shark researchers Dr Michelle Hubel from the Australian Institute of Marine Science, Jess Cramp from Sharks Pacific, and Dr Alan Friedlander 
from National um, Geographic and the University of Hawaii to find possible reasons and solutions to their concerns. This project is a really wonderful collaboration between um, the government of Niue, now Sophia Niue, Ridge Reef Project, and then also the organizations that um, Dr. Alan Friedlander and Dr. Michelle Heipel and I represent. So that's National Geographic, Australian Institute of Marine Science, and Shark Specific. And what we're really trying to do is try to help answer the question of what the heck is happening with all the sharks, um, taking the tuna from the local from the local people. While the interaction between sharks and fishermen is not unique to Niue, the researchers says that the Niuean fishermen are concerned because the sharks are coming closer to the shore. Last year there was concerns expressed by some of the fishing communities about sharks taking the tuna, so we proposed a project collectively where we're putting acoustic transmitters, so small electronic tags, inside of the sharks and inside of the tuna, and then on each of the fads, the buoys offshore, we're putting listening devices. And so we're surgically implanting these small transmitters inside the tunas and the sharks, and every time they swim by the fads, they get a detection, so we know um, what fish was at what fad during a certain time. We also can tell the depth and the temperature of the water so we can get some ideas of the movement patterns of these animals over time. These tags can last several years. So we'll be able to see the interactions of the sharks and the tuna collectively and see how we can minimize the interactions with those to help the fishermen catch more fish and minimize the damage done by sharks. We've come here to Niue to try and help understand what the interactions are between the sharks and the tuna and the fishermen. And so we're putting these transmitters in these sharks. So here's, here's one of the transmitters that we put inside the animals. It's got a unique ID number so we know who's who and we can, we can see where they're going. We've spent the last two weeks now fishing for sharks here in Niue. We've caught four different species, uh, gray reef sharks, silver tip sharks, one mako shark and a few silky sharks. Uh, but we've been fishing for two weeks now. We've caught 10 sharks, so not as many as we were hoping. We were planning to catch 20 sharks um, for this part of the project. So we have a little more work to do yet, but, but we're getting started. It's a good start and it's, it's great to be here. The, um, the project is scheduled to go for a couple years. We've just started on this trip and we've tagged so far about 15 tuna, about 10 or so sharks. And so what we're hoping to do is we'll come back in a few months and we'll be able to get some of the information off of the acoustic receivers, see what the preliminary data tells us. And then from there we can expand our network of receivers around the island so we can pick up more information and get a more spatial comprehensive understanding of what's going on. But the tags themselves are small, but they last up to several years. They're smart little things. They turn themselves on and off, and so we can get a, a really good idea over long periods of time how the sharks and the tuna interact with one another. Um, yeah, I guess the last thing to say would be to thank you to everyone in Niue um, for all of the support for this project. Thank you to the fishermen for working with us and asking us to come and help answer this question for them. There are similar questions in other Pacific Islands, even in Australia, we have similar issues. So Niue is the first chance we get to try and understand what's happening and, and try to help fishermen with, with the issues that they're having. The catch and release program is expected to take two years before sufficient data is collected to make informed decisions on what can be done to help the concerns raised by the local fishermen and also their interactions with sharks. This is Esther Pavihi for BCN News. And finally, business confidence in Niue is high, with 68% of businesses confident their business will perform better in the coming year. This is according to the results of the recent business confidence survey, which was conducted by the Auckland University of Technology. The Niue Chamber of Commerce states the survey also reflects that businesses are growing, with 28% looking to employ additional staff in the next 12 months. The Niue Chamber of Commerce membership and, and engagement with the private sector is continuing to escalate and the skills and knowledge of the private sector business owners is improving to meet the market demands and help build a prosperous Niue. And that's BCN News. Thank you for joining us. Have a good night.